Hi kids, welcome to RC series by Heaven's Publishing House. This is your English series for class 7. This your children is your English course book. That is English Skyline. And today we are about to begin with chapter number 8 of your books. That is When Tiger Swims. Right? Okay. So children, do you know, this is a tiger. So, what do you call tiger in different languages? This is a fun exercise for you and you have to do it. So, let's do a few of them. In Spanish, a tiger is called a tigre. It's called a tigre. Right? In Chinese, it is called Okay, and in Latin, it is called the grit. Right? So now, what you are going to do? You are going to find what the tiger is called in Arabic, African, Japanese, Korean, Hindi. Right? Now, write the names of any five tiger reserves of India. Do you know of any? Any five tiger reserves? Yes, there are so many of them. We have Jim Corbett, we have Sariska, Sundarbans, we have Kanha Tiger Reserve, right? So, all these are tiger reserves that are there in India. Find some more names, right? So, about this lesson, children, it is an autobiographical account where the author describes his encounter with a tigress while he was patrolling through the uh, tiger reserve in a Netatopani river. Let's see how he describes this. Let's get started. January 2001. It is 3 in the afternoon and a big breeze whips my hair as I stand behind the prow of the Project Tri Tiger Patrol boat. He says that it is January 2001 and it is 3 in the afternoon. A cool and a pleasant air is blowing against his head yes. and he is standing behind the prow. Prow means the front portion of any ship or boat. So he is standing behind the prow of the Project Tiger Patrol boat. I am making my way along the blue-green waters of the Neti Dhopani River in the Sundarbans Tiger Reserve. There is this river, Neti Dhopani in the Sundarbans Tiger Reserve and the author, he is patrolling through that river. The water is blue-green in color. Having charted the day's course on a large map a few minutes earlier, just a few minutes earlier, he had noted down whatever his day has been through in the large, on a large map. He had noted down, he had charted his day's course. Happy to be alive, the writer says, I'm, I'm happy to be alive this day. And I see a dragonfly and a common wanderer butterfly Navigate the strong wind to cross our boat's path 100 meters from the shore. He is saying that he saw a dragonfly and a butterfly cross their path. Right? They were navigating, crossing through the strong wind just 100 meters from the shore. He on a wind cheater against the gold. What is a wind cheater? Yes, it is a kind of jacket that protects you against the harsh winds and cold weather. So the author is putting on his wind cheater and saying, I marvel at the magic of nature that gives such fragile creatures with their amazing flying capabilities. He is saying that I wonder that how beautifully these fragile creatures like dragonflies and butterflies are gifted with such great flying capabilities, right? Nature has gifted them with great flying capabilities. About 250 meters ahead of our vessel, I spot floating log. About 250 meters in front of their vessel, that is their boat, 
they spot the writer spots a floating log log is a piece of wood we are moving against the current about 30 meters from the shore they are just 30 meter away from the shore and they are moving against the current like this this is the river and they are just moving 30 meters this is their boat they are 30 meters from the shore and ahead 250 meters ahead they see a log of wood that is moving right i watched the log in a disinterested way waiting for it to drift closer why why would it drift closer because the boat was moving against the flow of the current it was moving against the flow of the river so the log it should move with the current so it should row near their vessel but that never happened instead i big notice that it is moving at a 90 degree angle to us that the log here it is instead of moving towards the right hand it was moving at a 90 degree angle towards the shore and to the powerful current also it was moving against the flow of the current and it was very keen how would a log be able to do that at a distance of 150 meters i peered through my binoculars and see a small round shape certainly not a log now he found it to be very strange so he used his binoculars and saw through them what did he see that it was not any log he saw a small round shape right it was that of the face it takes me full 10 seconds to realize that a childhood dream has come true i am in the sundarbans and there before me in flesh and blood is a wild tiger yes his childhood dream had come true and that thing that was flowing ahead of their vessel was not any log it was a tiger in flesh and blood it was a wild tiger right no one sees tigers in the sundarbans nobody sees them everyone knows you come here for the experience or to bird watch or just to escape urban life people come to these reserves these national parks just to experience just to gain a good experience different experience or to bird watch or to watch the birds different variety of birds that are there and or sometimes just to escape the urban life that means sometimes just to escape the busyness of the city life yes against all probability against all possibilities there she is there is the wild tigress right in front of them the cat head silhouetted and dark like some ancient god is perhaps 15 500 meters to our left from the far shore and sorry so he says the tigress head silhouetted silhouetted means outline it is dark outline darkly it is like some ancient god which is 500 meters to the left to our left from the far shore as we draw nearer as they go near to the tiger i can see her ears switching he could see her ears moving when she turns her head to stare at our boat i am struck by the yellow of her beautiful eyes and when the tigress she looks their way he was mesmerized he was struck by how yellow and beautiful her eyes were she is headed straight for the far bank she was going towards the other shore of the river but then to my utter surprise she turns and begins to swim back in the direction when she came but surprisingly what the tigress did she started swimming from where she came she started swimming back right back in the direction when she came from where she came remorse now take the place of pure joy 
I had just experienced on seeing the cat. Now he was previously he was so happy, but now that happiness was taken over by sadness. He was very sad. He was very remorse because how much energy has that cat already spent swimming against the powerful current, and now I have disturbed and forced her to do. just the opposite of what she had wanted now because of seeing the author and his patrol boat the tigress what she was doing she was going back against the current she had done so much work to go against the current and now on seeing them she was going all back from where she came from and he felt very bad about it Everyone is now on the deck. Everyone is now on the top of the boat. I shout harsh instructions to the boatmen to maintain a distance of at least thirty meters from the cat and yell at him not to cut off her path to get a better look. He says that he gives strict instructions to the boatmen that in no case he has to cross the path of the. Tigress, and they had to maintain a good thirty meters distance from her in every case. But the cat has other ideas, right? As our boat comes to a near halt, as their boat nearly stops, she actually begins to swim back towards us with the current. She starts going with the current. She starts coming near to them. She approaches as close as ten meters to our left. She stops just ten meters to the left of their vessel, glancing up at us just once before heading for the shore from behind our vessel. She just took a quick glance. She looked at them for a small moment, and then she went to the shore. She headed for the shore from behind their boat. Right? Clear? Okay, let's move on. Tigers are very powerful swimmers. So that is, the tigers are very powerful swimmers. I can imagine her huge paddle-like paws. Paddle-like paws means his paws are compared to paddles. Paddles are used to row the boat, to move the boat, right? Propelling her forward under water. You could see his paddle-like paws moving under the water. Helping her move forward in the water. Right? Her heart must be filled to burst from the effort and anxiety. He imagines that how much effort she had put in in crossing the river and coming back. That her heart must be pounding badly with anxiety and nervousness, and it was. It might be about to burst from the effort. Avoiding a second project tiger vessel positioned between our boat and the shore. Now there was another boat that had come, another tiger patrol boat that had come, and avoiding that boat, the tiger had head for the mud bank. She heads towards the mud bank. During pause, touching the earth, the tiger struggles momentarily in the slippery mud, and then bounds. Tail up into the mangrove and is swallowed by her emerald fall. She says that those great paws of the tigress they touch the earth. Then she, when she went out of the water, she struggled momentarily. That means she she struggled only for a short period of time, short moment in the slippery mud, and then she. Uh, Sprang up and she vanished into the mangroves, into the emerald forest, lush green forest. That is the mangrove forest. Mangrove is a tree. This whole episode takes no more than three or four minutes, during which I am granted momentary access into the life of one of the world's most secretive, most Threatened predators. He says that all this happens over a span of three to four minutes only, and during which the writer is able to uh, see a glimpse of the 
लाइन ऑफ द मोस्ट सीक्रेटिव मोस्ट थ्रेटन प्रिडेटर प्रिडेटर हंटर बट ही दिस हंटर दिस प्रिडेटर इज हिमसेल्फ थ्रेटन ही इज इन डेंजर राइट आई हैव सीन टाइगर्स इन द वाइल्ड फोर्स ऑफ टाइम्स अक्रॉस इंडिया बट सम रीजन दैट आई कैन नॉट क्वाइट एक्सप्लेन दिस एक्सपीरियंस लीव मी mark for life he said that he says that there have been many a times when he had come across tigers previously also but for some reason or the other he doesn't know why this encounter with the tigers remains etched in his heart forever he never forgets that moment right the sundarban is a birder's paradise the sundarban has a beautiful a wide variety of birds and before daylight faded so i found myself identifying birds comparing their beaks with food they sought so once the tigress has vanished in the forest now the writer he observes the different variety of birds in the daylight he was comparing their beaks with the different kinds of food they sought curlew and wimbrel dug deep into the mud for crustacean what are curlew and wimbrel yes these are bird children which have very long slender and down curved beaks right like 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 this is the case of the bird. Be, their beak is somewhat like this: long, slender, and down curve. Okay. Dug deep into the mud for crustaceans. What are crustaceans? These are the small animals which have hard shells, and also they have several pairs of legs. Sandpipers. These are another bird which pick off smaller creatures. closer to the surface the sandpipers they feed on creatures which are very closer to the surface brown wing kingfisher waited patiently for a fisher crab to come within striking distance they used to kingfishers they used to wait patiently for these creatures to come near them before whooping them whooping down on them like multi colored these bombers what are these kingfishers compared with yes they are compared with multi colored beautiful teal bombers that means silent attackers right on slick mud bank on slick mud bank means slick me slippery that melts like chocolate into the water these mud this mud looks as if chocolate is melting in the water crocodile monitor lizards mud skippers and fiddler crabs revealed themselves from time to time like so many earth jewels he is saying that these crabs mud skippers what are mud skippers these are some fish that can swim out of the water for a longer period of time and they can also walk and breathe on land right so these are mud skippers so all these crocodiles monitor lizards mud skippers and crabs they used to reveal themselves from time to time as if they were some jewel some jewel okay of snake paint stating lee made its way towards gathering of mud skippers since it was so slippery a snake had to work really hard to make it make its way towards some mud skipper right but It lost its chance at the very last moment when the fish, specially adapted for movement on land, darted away. So, as he was about to catch them, these fish they used to dart away. They used to scale away. Right? This utterly fragile, strange, and magical ecosystem is geologically new and still evolving. It is saying that this. very delicate ecosystem it is very new what is an ecosystem it is a geographical area where all the animals birds trees and all other organisms they all 
coexist and they form a bubble of life. So this ecosystem is very new and it is still evolving. It is still developing. Right? Rivers and tides circulate nutrients like the stuff might stir a great soup. Now they are preparing rivers and their tide with a shell which stirs nutrients in the soup. Same way these rivers and tides are stirring the nutrients in the water bodies. Right? With nothing wasted as living creatures join the benthic flora. Benthic flora, the plants which are present at the very bottom of the sea. Right? So, with nothing wasted, nothing goes waste as all these living creatures, they join the plants that are at the very bottom of the sea in metabolizing everything organic. They use them as their food. Everything is utilized. Nothing goes waste. Okay? Even the old thick with drama as the sun begins to now he says that as the sun is setting, even then the drama doesn't stop. What is the evening air filled with? Above me, competing with swifts for the bounty of an insect stalked sky, pygmy pipestrels scan the horizon. What are swifts? They are some birds and pygmy pipestrels. They are also birds which belong to the family of bats. Okay, so both the swifts and the pygmy pipestrals, they are competing with each other for the bounty, for the reward of an insect stock sky. There are so many insects in the sky and swifts are competing with the pygmy pipestrals for the hay. Clearly, all is well with the world as darkness descends. As it becomes dark, clearly everything is okay, everything is Rule with the world as the darkness descends on Ghazi Khali, where we drop anchor for the night, where they stop for the night. Right? Now, conflict of interest. What is it? Here, the author narrates an incident from an earlier visit to the Sundarbans. He had visited some time previously, and now he is narrating that incident. Let's see. By the time we reach the Matla four forest compartment, all thoughts of heaven had been forgotten. Now he had these feelings of heaven. All these feelings had been forgotten when he reached the Matla four forest compartment. Here, hordes of laborers were busy hacking a huge sweet water pond out of the mangrove swamp. What he saw there? that there were a number of laborers who were hacking a sweet water pond. Hacking means what they were doing? These uh, swamps, they, they were clearing them to get the sweet water from beneath. Right? I wondered why. Now the author is wondering what was the need of doing so? What was the need of getting the sweet water by hacking these swamps? I wondered, what is a swamp? Yes, a swamp is also an area which is permanently covered with water. Right. And the author is wondering why since every Sundarban creature has learned to survive very well in the brackish water environment. How is the water in the Sundarban? It is brackish. Brackish means it is Salty, but not as salty as that of sea water, but still it is salty. So he is saying, when all the living creatures of the Sundarbans have already adapted to the brackish water, then what was the need of this sweet water? What was the need of hacking the sweet water pond? Right? Without well intentioned but ecologically risky handouts from humans, this could be very Risky to do this could pose some dangers to the Sundarban creatures. Thank you. Half later, we dogged, we stopped at the Haldibari camp jetty. Jetty is a narrow place that is uh, constructed to avoid the water from the water bodies to overflow. Thank you. 
and walked through a net protected walkway they were going through this walkway which was protected with a net from both the sides so that in order to protect them from the attack of any animal right so they walked through a net protected walkway to inspect a fleet of fishing boats there was a group of fishing boats boats that were parked laden with log the boats had been confiscated from wood poacher by the forest department all these boats they were filled with logs that these poachers poachers means people who illegally deal with the wood right so these boats had been confiscated that means they had been taken away from the poacher by the forest department okay clear yeah. they are almost 3 lakh people who score the in the bunch map to eke out a living each day so there are 3 lakh people who every day score the sundarbans me they search the forest for something or the other to eke out a living to make out a living for themselves right and some clearly are no longer satisfied with farming of fish some people they are no longer satisfied with farming in the sundarbans or fishing at this phase the forest will soon vanish what were they doing instead they were poaching the wood they were cutting down these mangrove trees and selling them illegally i thought darkly uh, at this rate the forest will soon vanish i thought darkly sold to the highest bidder so these forests are very soon going to be all gone all sold to the highest bidder highest bidder the person who gives the maximum money for them right a delta patch of low lying mud and silt what is a delta yes it is a low lying area the triangular in shape right and this is the place where a river divides itself into smaller rivers the full joining the sea so it is a delta patch low lying mud and silt silt is the mud the soil that gets deposited along the river okay the kumbhal bunt is a tropical estuary from forest this tropical estuary means it is where the fresh water from the rivers and streams meets the ocean right so kumbhal bunt is a tropical estuary from forest where as many as 65 mangrove plant species grow there are there is a large variety of mangrove trees in the sundarban forest making it the most biodiverse biodiverse means having a great variety of mangroves in the world it has the maximum variety of mangroves nutrients pour into the food factory the sundarban forest from all sides as flood waters from both the ganges and the brahmaputra mix and merge with the south ocean tides to form ever shifting creeks and channels the veins and arteries of the sundarban what is the author saying he saying that the nutrient that come from the flood waters of both ganges and brahmaputra river they may they pour into this food factory and now what they mean they mix and merge with the old southern ocean tide to make creeks and channels these children are some waterways narrow waterways which are surrounded by land masses on both the sides right and these are ever shifting the which acts like the veins and arteries of the sundarban just like you have veins and arteries in your body these channels and creeks they look like the veins and arteries of the sundarban clear now humans are not really welcome in the sundarbans and life can be hard and very dangerous for them unless of course they happen to be traveling in the comfort of the tourist vessels he saying that life can be very hard for humans in the forest in the sundarban so unless 
they are traveling in a safe uh, vessel, that is the tourist vessel. Let me wonder that human settlements exist only in the northern edges where solid ground and man-made dikes keep the tides at bay. So, there are no permanent settlements in this Sundarban, right? There are only settlements, small settlements that exist only in the northern edges where there is good solid ground and man-made dikes. What are dikes? Yes, these are high thick walls made of stone which prevents the water from the seas and ocean from entering, right? This is probably only tiger reserve in India where there are no permanently settled villages. This is the only tiger reserve which has no permanently settled villages. This is the ultimate land of the tiger. This is the land of tiger. This is the only one which has no human settlement, right? Though humans are not settled here, they pour into the swamp on every day that the weather allows. So, whenever the weather allows, though these humans are not staying there permanently, they pour in every day, right, to eke out a living, to make out a living by fishing, farming or poaching the wood. This sets up conflict of interest that, that ends up as no-win situation in which both humans and tigers die. Now, this is a no-win situation in which both the humans, since it is not a safe place for humans to be, and the tigers also are dying because of the human activities. So, it is a no-win situation. Clear, children? I hope this chapter is clear to all of you. Okay, this is written by very renowned writer Bhikkhu Sehgal. Okay. The moral that we learn: the tigers play a key role in maintaining healthy ecosystems. These ecosystems supply both nature and people with fresh water, food, and health. These ecosystems are very important. They provide us with food, water, health, securing landscapes to protect at least nine major water sheds. Right, children? Okay. Now, let's start with the exercise. Take the correct answer. Which is our national animal? I know you all know this. A royal Bengal tiger. Right? Number two, which river flows in the Sundarbans Tiger Reserve? Yes, it is Neti Dhopani, Neti Dhopani River. No one sees tigers in the Sundarbans, right? Number four, tigers are very powerful swimmers. They are very powerful swimmers. Dash are not really welcomed in the Sundarbans. Who? The Humans, humans are not really welcomed in the Sundarbans, right? Shall we move on? Good. Now, let's fill in the blank. This utterly fragile dream and magical dash is geologically new and still evolving. It is the magical ecosystem, right? Correct? Number two, it takes me a full dash to realize that childhood dream has come true. It takes me a full 10 seconds. It took him 10 seconds to realize that it was not a log of wood but a wild tiger. Right? Dash now takes the place of the pure joy I had just experienced on seeing the cat. What filled the poet? The author, remorse, remorse now takes the place of the pure joy he felt. By the time we reached the Matla court compartment, all thoughts of heaven had been forgotten. All the thoughts of heaven had been forgotten as he saw so many laborers were hacking the swamp, right? Yet, 
against all dash there she is yet against all probability there she is there is the wild tiger probability right sir ha done let's move on true or false let's do them tigers are not very powerful swimmers is it true no they are very powerful swimmers so it is for about 350 meters ahead of our vessel i spot a floating log did he see did he see the vessel uh, did they see the log 350 meters ahead no it was 250 meters ahead so it is again false number 3 even the end thick with drama as the sun begins to set yes at that time the pygmy pipestrels and the swifts were fighting for those insects right so it is true those humans are not settled here they pour into the swamps on every day that the weather allows yes true number 5 This is the ultimate land of the lion. This is it is the ultimate land of the tigers and not lions. So yes, it is false. Clear? Okay. Now answer the following question. Describe the encounter between the narrator and the tiger. So yes, one day when the author was traveling the blue green waters of the netu dhupani river he saw a log of wood floating in the front of their vessel which later turned out to be a wild tigress yes now what how did what was the encounter like for the tigress was moving away from them and then suddenly it changed the course of its movement and started moving towards their vessel it came as near as 10 meters to their boat it glanced towards them for a small moment and before she glanced towards them for a small moment before reaching for the shore from behind their vessel right What does the author say about the biodiversity of the Sundarbans? Yes, according to the author, the Sundarbans is the most biodiverse forest, which has about 65 mangrove species. Right, so it is one of the most biodiverse mangrove forests. Why are there no permanently settled villages in the Tiger Reserve? because it is very dangerous sundarbans is not safe for the human settlement unless you are traveling in a tourist vehicle it is not safe for the human to dwell okay what is the no win situation in the sundarbans that the author describes the no win situation is that even though the humans are not welcome to settle in the sundarbans still they keep coming there on a daily basis to eke out a living which uh, which is creating a no win situation where both the tigers and the people are dying right this is the no win situation now give two examples of similes from the chapter and explain what they mean children what are similes this children is a part of speech when one thing is compared to the other with the use of words like like as i think like this as that right so we use as and like words to create a comparison so from this chapter can you find some similes i'll give you two examples firstly when the author says paddle like paws of the tiger paddle like paws so he is comparing the paws of the tri- tiger with that of the paddle right and other time he compared the kingfisher's wood 
steel bomber right so this is another example of simile there are so many other examples in the chapter that you are going to find on your own right children so i hope you had fun learning this chapter with me right so i will see you guys with my next chapter very soon till then stay elated bye children